We are on. Okay. So welcome to the Kalbach Shul and to Exciting Judaism. Please join us on YouTube and on Skype. Password. David Shweki is the man. <laughs> Password is Exciting <laughs> Judaism. On Skype. On Skype. And we welcome back Rabbi Zelikson, a uh, author, a noted scholar of Chabad Hasidus. Um, we are doing part two on the Seder Hishtalshlis, the spiritual worlds, understanding the spiritual worlds. We, um, last, last time we talked extensively about the uh, Aryan Self, the infinite light, before God, so to speak, metaphorically, withdrew his light so that he could create a space. And we talked about the, the residual energy known as the Bashima. We talked about the um, Kav, the ray of light, the power of the finite, the power of the infinite, the power of the vessel, the power of the light, and so on. And then we talked about Adam Kadmon, the, the being that is, of all beings, the original, the originator, and in, in, in some, some sense, the, um, the origin, so to speak, since uh, even though it's not Orient Social of Neat Simpson, it's not the, the infinite light before the concealment, but it is in a relationship to it. So today, we're going to start talking about the, um, we're really going to be heading towards uh, a disaster called Olam Hatohu, the world of chaos, the world of, uh, the world where things don't seem to work out. Huh. And, uh, but before we get there, we're going to kind of talk about where, where things were. Um, we're going to be talking about Olam HaAkudim. To understand this, uh, one of the things that Hasidus claims to have done, uh, um, in, in a sense, because one of the questions really is, what's the difference between Hasidus and Kabbalah? Is it just different stages of the same thing, and at a certain stage it became Hasidus? Um, or perhaps it was geographic, I meaning there were Sephardic capitalists, and maybe their emphasis had some slight differences from the Sephardic Kabbalists or even the Ashkenazic Kabbalists, such as the Gon the Gon, who did not, not only did he not accept the teachings of the Baal Shanta, but he had his own teachings that were also Chidush and that were also now. So one of the distinguishing things that uh, you'll often hear in, in Chabad Chassidus is that Kabbalah talks about how man was created in the image of God, the image of Hashem. But to, to understand that, to understand how we're in the image of Hashem, we focus on talking about what, what are the worlds, what are the higher worlds, what are the higher sphere of. And then eventually we'll extrapolate and bring that down into our own lives, hopefully. Uh, and Hasidus, I say this in the name of the altar Rebbe, is that Kabbalah makes God into like a man, so to speak. And Hasidus makes a man into like a God. It's a good, it's a good part. It sounds like fear, but the idea, in other words, like we say in the name of the Magad, this is God is our shade. So the Magad says that when we move, above moves or um, that, that in other words that it's we have the kaya to affect above and the truth is both Kabbalah and Hasidus talk about the two directions the, the direction that where it starts from above and we're the receiver and God is the giver and it's Mamayla Lamat that's called the, the terminology is we're like looking up and saying I'm really low and it's coming down and the other way is starting from me, starting from us, is our looking at our own humanity and working through whatever it is that our issues are and finding our way up. 
So Hasidus in the sense, even though both Hasidus and Kabbalah have both directions, but the claim is the Hasidus that there's more of an emphasis on the human bringing themselves up and even understanding, so to speak, getlichkeit, godliness, through understanding the inner psyche, through understanding the, 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 the uh, inner workings of the self. I know you, caught, you you referred to a number of times, there's, there's a verse, this is, from your own body or flesh, you can perceive the divine. So one of the things that's common in the Hasidus is um, this kind of psychology of the inner dynamics between the various potentially conflicting or united intellectual aspects of self and emotional aspects of self. We call them the the mochin and the midas. We divide it into the mental components and the emotional self. But those two parts of the self, they make one self even other divisions. And for example, one of the things we're talking about here is a place where the light doesn't have, it's not so differentiated into the particular vessels. Hey, brother. So we're talking about, I'll give you an example. Let's say, I believe in, uh, it's in Tafish Ayin Beis, where it's a beautiful example. If you have, it's the Shmaya and Avtalion, where the, they were the, uh, they were the Rebbe's of their generation. Uh, interestingly, they were Geirim, I think, right? The converts. It's great. It's good to be a convert. And they had Hillel and Shammai as students. Now, although you could say Hillel actually was originally in Bavel, and he came to Eretz Yisrael and Shammai, so they may have had different teachers as well, but presumably they both had, at a certain point in their life, the same Misora, they had the same teachers, and yet their schools are so radically different. They're, they argue um, on so many things. But the question is, what did the Rebbe say? Why don't they go back and like say, look at my notes. The Rambam says they used to take notes. Even before Rabbi Nasi, they would take notes. They say, what did, Sh- what did Shmaya say? What did Italian say? Let's look it up. Let's compare our notebooks. So what happened? So the Rebbe Rashab explained how exactly 100 years ago, maybe to the day, maybe not, a little 100 years in a few months, that compared to Hillel and Shammai, Shammai of time, the teacher of Hillel and Shammai were like a light. And they were like the vessels. Hillel and Shammai were the vessels. And since Hillel's personality, or vessel, so to speak, his, his unique individuality was that he was a man that, that was more kind, or liberal, for lack of a better word. And Shammai was more stern. It's another word for stern, more conservative. More open minded. This is for Irene. This for Irene to make More open minded and more what's the word? One was one, one was one was more in, in halacha, one was more mako, one was more lenient, one was one was more machra, one was more strict. Hill, of course, was the, the lenient one. It, it's so much so that when he's when he's out of his own line, we make the Mishnah the Gemar makes it a, a point to say, Mikule be Shammai, right? These are one of the things that were Shammai, who's ordinarily strict, becomes lenient. Lenient isn't necessarily kind. That's true, good distinction. And out of, again, Hill and Shammai as a whole just <laughs> talk about them. And um, I know in your Mafteach, you have beautiful Hill LGs. Oh, what do I, what do, I do? I, I, I click yes. You accept it. Oh, I see. Answer. Hopefully. Answer. So, yes, what? 
<laughs> Talk about Hillel as long as it's not Dari, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, don't talk. Is Anne still there? How's it going? Hello. Hi. So, so Hillel and Shammai are receiving the same light, but because their their temperaments are different, they're, which is a whole other question, what the temperament, how does that affect Allah? But it does, obviously, to a certain degree. So because they have this different vessels of how they receive. I see it also, for example, you have a great Rebbe. You have Hasidim who have such different views of what the Rebbe meant to say. How could it be? Because again, they have their own personalities, their own vessel. And when they receive it, they get a different element of it. They see a different aspect of the light. But the thing is, in the light itself, before it was received and heard in their own individual ways, there was something in the light that maybe contained the potential for the two interpretations. Like the Ari is like that. How do you get the Vilna Gom and the Alter Rebbe? They're both reading the Ari and they're coming, one of them is saying, every time you do a mitzvah, you make the world a better place. The Alter Rebbe, you make, you're illuminating, you're, you're, you're elevating the sparks of Kedusha, but you're also bringing down Kedusha into the physical world. <clears throat> and the Vilna Gaon says, you're elevating the sparks of Kedusha, but the world is now a darker place. It's both in the Ari, or whether Tzimtzum is literally happening or not literally happening, both re reading the Ari. So how does this, what does this mean? This means that it's all about the nature of the, how strong what we call the self is. Okay. The self versus the the selfless, which is the light. We'll call the self the vessel, the personality, and we'll call the what happened to our. I don't know. Uh, the time it comes in. What? It, it, it on remote. I don't know. No, Irene, we're you're, we're fine. We're good with you. We're talking about somebody else that, that, that just uh, was flashing on and off. Okay. Let me get to the point here. I do have a point. Hard to believe. The vessel of the light. The vessel of the light. So we use these examples of the personality and the, the teacher, the student, to be able to talk about what's going on above. So let's, let's try to understand why we're saying there's a place where all of the distinctions between what would ordinarily be polarities, meaning things that are opposing each other, so that, like contradictory tendencies, like um, leniency and, and stringencies are contradictions in, in application. In, in, in Paul Mamish, either you're, you're strict or you're lenient. And they come out of either you're giving chesed or you're restrictive gvura yet we say okay in the world of akudim there's a world where they're all they're kind of bound bound as one without having their self aspect their vessel aspect able to delineate and differentiate them what's what is what would that be explain it in a person's 